Hey everybody, I'm at Canyon Crest Country Club in Riverside, California. Really nice place. Really, um, like you can imagine like golfers of like the 50s and 40s walking around here. How old is this place? Um, 60, no, 54. So okay, so you can imagine maybe cowboys walking this place in the 50s, <laughs> but in the 60s, some really good golfers. This is O'Neill Callen. O'Neill is a... Uh, assistant professional here he teaches a lot of golf lessons and uh is a fan of be better golf yeah and a be better golfer himself uh yeah. kind of defining what a be better golfer is but basically somebody totally obsessed with getting better at golf and the, <laughs> that'd be o'neill today we're going to do something with this the forte golf ball let me uh hold that for me yeah up close to the camera because then i can actually get a focus on it uh, that's good. That's good. All right. So the Forte golf ball is from Australia. It's actually I don't know. I don't want to say definitively, but I don't think I might be one of the only people in America to have this ball right now. It's a six-piece golf ball, and very nicely they sent me six dozen balls. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to do was a short game little test of the Forte. It's totally subjective, but um, O'Neill has some other like. I don't even know what OEM stands for, but these are OEM golf balls, right? Uh, so, so a Chrome Soft, uh, two Chrome Softs, and a Pro V1X that covers most people, and uh, and these Forte. So, the, so subjectively, as you hit these, uh, so let's do a little spread, O'Neill. Oh, you hit uh, three of those, and then we'll hit three Fortes. And you were telling me before. Uh, you used to have the chipping yips fiercely yeah. in college, huh? Double chipped in my first event, and it was just a disaster for four years. How embarrassed were you after you hit it? <laughs> really embarrassed, because mm -hmm. that was my strength. It was an school. obvious double chip? Oh, yeah, I had to. I mean, I didn't what do you do after, rules-wise? That's a one-shot one penalty. You and you put it back where it, No, you play where it ends up. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How'd you get um, over it? Um... Well, I searched and searched and searched, and then once I started teaching is when I finally got better at chipping, because I realized you really just have to hit the middle of the club face, and then the ball is going to do good stuff. But if you try So you to, stop concentrating on a lot of the ancillary stuff and more yeah. on just getting it in the face. Yeah, you used to like try all these methods, and really, like the best method is to hit the center of the club face the easiest possible way. So Let's see it. That's what I started doing. All right, so we have we got a little shot here of very typical around the green shot. And I noticed with your chipping, and you're really good at it now, great shot, uh, you're very, very uh, brisk with it, very like, uh, it's kind of staccato on each end, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm just- It's not like long and loopy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I think that's maybe how I started double chipping. I started- Getting long and, and then having a slow into it or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to do all these things, but really like, you just gotta hit the, hit the center. Okay, so... No, I mean, that one, I didn't touch the ground at all, and with that old long and loopy, that would have been bladed across the game. Yep, mm -hmm. But I didn't even touch the ground, and it's still... Your margin error is just yeah. better. So technique-wise, what, what are you trying to do here as we're... Uh, these are the three uh, OEM balls, and then yeah. we're going to go to the... So I did notice that, for me, it was easier with a slightly stronger left-hand grip. Okay. Str so... So turned over. Your grip is your grip is stronger on these shots than they are on regular iron shots. Yeah. Okay. Um, gotcha. And then I just kind of I'll use a little more. I guess you could say hinge, and then I'll kind of unhinge. And I guess the way I describe it is I unhinge it halfway. Gotcha. I don't unhinge it mm -hmm. all the way. Yep. So just this little. So move. it's not really a hinge and hold, and it's also not like a a flippy thing. It's a little yeah. a little mix. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, you know. Both the hinge and hold versus the body rotation, both of them are saying, hey, this is the holy grail of chipping. Yep. I mean, I don't see Phil hinge and hold. It would look like that. Right, right. You know, and mm -hmm. I don't see Jason mm -hmm. Day do this. Yeah. So there's that slight mix of just yep. natural hinging and unhinging motion. So Go ahead. I don't really call it something. I just hit it. What club is that? You're uh, this is 58. 58, I got you. Good shot. You're one of those guys that uh, plays all different clubs around the green. All right, um, here, here's the three uh, Aussie balls for yeah. takeoff. I'll use balls. my 58 95% of the time okay. and my 54 5% of the time. All right, hit one of those and. and uh, good 
Okay. Uh, it sounded a little clicky, but it, 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 it turned out nicely. Yeah, I hit behind it a little bit, but okay. not a terrible shot. That's a really great result. Same thing, there's a little bit more of a click to it. Yeah. Or was that technique? Uh, felt a little low on the face. That's about it right That sounded side. great. Yeah. And that's almost hold up. Okay, that's a tap in. All right, so first blush of those three and then, and then I'll hit some. Sure, you want to use my wedge? Yeah, sure. All right, so first, first blush at hitting, so basically we'd have to call this, I mean, zero science to this, but that's about a tie. <laughs> this, this forte here actually hit that one. So actually the fortes would have been a little closer, but they're basically, except for maybe this one, they're all like, you know, gimmies. All right, so um, let's try, so first blush, what do you what do you think, how do, how do you feel? Would you would this give you confidence using these around the green or you still would be a little iffy or? Um, no, I mean, they feel good. The, the sound, it sounded a little funny off the wedge, but. That's true. That's a little like cheap, a, you think? No, sounding, it or? sounded. It's just more clicky than you're used yeah, to? Yeah, more clicky. Yeah. Yeah. The chrome soft, I mean, is extremely soft, so. Yeah. On the, on the cover. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, it sounded a little more clicky. Okay. When on the channel, I've, I've chipped poorly. Yeah, you get two kinds of people. You get, you get the people that want to see you do this. Steve Stricker or, or a, you know. And then you have people who, who want to see you do the Phil's hinge and hold. Yeah. And I like the halfway thing that you were saying. Uh, talk me through this, O'Neill, as far as like what I should be thinking, because more and more in the channel, as, as I was telling you, I'm trying to get into, okay, what should be going through my brain as I'm actually doing the shot and try to see in the camera to see if we can see the ball and me at the same time. Yeah, point. sure. Um, so is what, what would I, you so know. what's in my brain as I'm like, okay, Say like I've decided, I've got my 54 degree, I know I'm gonna hit basically a 50-50 shot, 50 carry, 50 roll. Yeah. And, cause I'm trying to get beyond that cause I think that stuff is kind of like good golfers basically know how to pick their shot and stuff like that. But I, where I think people get into trouble is once they're over the shot, what they're actually thinking about. I don't really want to be, I have this feeling of this bracing thing, but yeah. I'm not thinking about that. Yeah. What should I be thinking? Um. I would really focus on the center. So a lot of, like if you can imagine a small X on the center of your golf club, just try to have that meet the ball. So you have a, a marker here, right? I'll typically use a Expo marker. I okay. don't think I have it in an easy place to get. Sharpie will stay forever, so don't do that. So imagine we're, we're gonna put a little X here. Yep. And I've been doing some experimenting with stickers and things to, I want to get a bunch of little brain stickers, you know, and just be like, hey, put your brain here. Right here, yeah. Yeah, right. So, okay, so I'm going to put my brain right on that sweet spot and... And get it right up to the ball there. It's the uh, one thing O'Neill and I were talking about, not to like chip like this and then try to create something, but you mean like get it right in there. Yep. Oh, that felt great. Okay, a little juice. That was the Callaway. All right, so here are the four tables, and just in doing something like this, so come closer, O'Neill. Yeah. So you can kind of hear the sound. That is a little bit of that Kirkland or Snell or Vice. You know, it's not the the golf shop sound. That's a little bit of this other ball sound. Which just takes a little bit of getting used to. It's you guys can probably hear that, and uh, I should be flip flopping this with the um, the name brand ball, but you can kind of hear the sound of that. All right, so now I'm going to be over here. I got my spot. All right, so three with a four table. So that's kind of that normal clicky sound, but it feels pretty good. That was a miss hit, and it, it checked up like it knew the, where the hole was, which was good. Get a little closer to it. So you think uh, a lot of golfers can, if, if they're doing basically like this and chipping, you think they can improve their impact by get, like kind of snuggling it in there a little bit? Yeah, and I just make sure you don't press on the ground to move the ball, but yeah, get, get in there close to the ball. Oh, I love that. All right, good action on the green. That one ran on a little bit. This face was shut just a little bit. All right, pick my spot and just hit it in the center of the face.
That was like an old man stroke, but it worked out great. All right, let's go check them out. Yeah. I mean, the di so for me, the difference between the, so let's see, here is a forte ball. Here's a forte, a forte, and a forte. And this is a Callaway, a Callaway, Callaway title. So, I mean, really within the margin of error of all these balls. So really, I would say no difference. As far as actual performance wise, I would say no difference short game wise between the Forte on these little touch shots around the green. I think maybe you, maybe you might just see something out at 50 yards or something, but no. The only, the only difference, and let's see if we can do, so listen to this. You can hear the difference already, huh? Yeah. So that's a Callaway. And by the same measure, let's get a Titleist. Okay, I can hear that. Okay, and this is a Forte. Okay, so you can hear a difference for sure. Just a little bit clickier, just a little bit more higher pitched. Yeah. But that's just, you know, but a, a lot of feel they've seen in studies and stuff, and that's why the golf industry is concentrating on sound so much. A lot of your feel is derived from the sound. That's why the acoustics of drivers, as uh, all the other limits are being pushed, are, are starting to be. All right, so Forte short game wise, I would have zero problems going to shoot a very important competitive round with a Forte ball for a short game. Yeah. I have not played it on the course yet. I putted with it. It putts great. Putts like the other one, so I give it a thumbs up. Uh, otherwise, channel news, it's 2017. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I know we have a lot of exciting, cool things coming up. Included is the Be Better Golf School. There are five spots still left, and uh, it's only gonna get to about 12 spots. So definitely, for information about it, send me a personal email, is below, or just go to the link that's below. All about the Be Better Golf School on March 11th and 12th in Terra Lago with we're long drive champion Jeff Flagg and reactionary golf coach Tony Lutzak, which uh, there are deeper and bigger reasons why I chose Tony to do this school. We'll get more into that later, but uh, basically let's say best way I found to actually be better at golf. But what else did I want to talk about? Because uh, O'Neill's not here yet, so uh, I have some time to talk. Um, when I was in Virginia, just got back like two days ago from Virginia. Uh, you'll see, so I'm still looking for a logo. I've talked to one or two people about it. I did buy some Golden Horseshoe swag, so until I have a Be Better Golf logo, the uh, Golden Horseshoe logo, my favorite logo in golf, is gonna be my default thing. And plus some smart people in uh, marketing and everything else said like, hey, you shouldn't wear a, you know, a, a logo hat of like a golf company or whatever on you, on the, you know, if they're not. You're like, you know, why do that? So. I'm just wearing things I like. And uh, the other thing is, I wanted to, I've been working a lot on my putting recently, and you guys will see my putter. Uh, because, not because I've been putting pretty well, but I have not been putting with my new putter as well as I wanted to. So I started working on that a little bit, and I started, I started putting well. And a lot of people have been asking me about my putting. So I might be doing a very in-depth putting video coming up pretty soon. If you're interested in that, in a super in-depth putting video, now this is not gonna be like a lot of other Be Better Golf things where it's like all the different techniques of all the different ways you could do it and you know, this guy does it this way, this guy does it that way. No, this is like, will strictly be the Be Better Golf way of putting. This is the way I putt, the way, um, uh, basically, uh, I've had a couple mentors in it and I've taken things from some guys and left other things out from other guys, but I have a certain technique and a very specific, like it, it, everything that I'm, that I'm going to say about in this is a little off the wall. It's a little wacky and, uh, it'll definitely get you inside the mind of like what I'm thinking when I'm putting in this kind of be better golf style of putting. Some of the things that I do are, are, uh, they're cool for me because I don't I don't hear anybody else doing that. And I've heard a lot of different theories about putting in golf, but I do a few of these things and uh, as far as like recreating memories and getting into the zone and things like that that I don't hear anybody else doing, I think it's a really big deal. All right, let's go see if O'Neill's here and we'll uh, get the day started. All right, let's go.